in a number of spiritual paths. Your deeper questions might find answers in a session in the pastor's study. You're looking for something more, so let's offer you something different. Merry meet, blessed be. Welcome to yet another session in a very different pastor study. And we're back in the study for this one because, well, among other things, welcome to reality. The cathedral is in a basement. The cathedral folds up. And unfortunately, we just got done with a bunch of flooding problems in this basement. And I'm waiting for the chapel to dry up. And I hope it dries soon because I've got a few things that I need to do there. I do have the main altar upstairs, but the downstairs one has its own special purposes and intents. Especially with some projects that I've got going right now. Nevertheless, here we are. And I came across an issue that I've come across many times. polarity that has to be dealt with. Offending versus enlightening. How can that be a polarity? How can that be a dichotomy? Well, they so often seem to be especially in certain environments. What comes to mind particularly is what I experienced of base chapels in the Air Force. With only a few exceptions, and those being the rather, how should I say, more staunch Pentecostal Protestants, the ones that tried to push this Team Jesus concept at the Air Force Academy, for instance. With, the ex with that exception, so much of the Air Force chaplaincy and what went on in base chapels was it seemed more aimed at not offending rather than actually showing anybody something, teaching anybody something. There were some exceptions. There were a few chaplains that had guts and they spoke, but there were a bunch of others and they were the ones that usually wound up with the rank who did everything that they could to make sure that they didn't offend. Even if it was trampling on some of the basic tenets of the faith that sent them there, the particular denomination that put them there. And that's a problem. A couple of shows ago, we had this one. I took a commercial jink, a commercial line from a couple of years ago, and converted it over to my use. I asked, "Got guts?" And here's a perfect example. I've said before, 
if you have a tradition, follow it. Now it's true that when you are in a an omnidenominational or multi-denominational setting where you have a ritual, whatever you want to call it, call it a circle, call it a service, whatever, and it has to serve more than what one path, there does need to be some accommodation needed. But not at the risk of not teaching. Not at the risk of failing to set the example. I remember one particular individual, a Methodist minister, when he did a communion service at the base chapel, he did the usual Protestant style individual little communion glasses at the pews, but he also would have a chalice at the rail, and there'd be wine in that chalice, except for Methodist ministers at the time weren't supposed to deal with wine. That's one example. I suppose I could talk about more. And at the other end, offending. Is there some place where we can finally say Okay, here I draw the line. I'm going to be talking about my path. I respect your path. But this is mine. And this is what I'm talking about. One of my dreams, and some people will accuse me of maybe smoking the wrong kind of something. And the funny thing is I don't smoke anymore. Anything. And I never smoked anything but tobacco, but somebody accuses me of smoking something funny. When I talk about when the day comes when we can all have our differences, know that our differences are there, and not let them get in the way of the work that needs to be done. So offending versus enlightening. I think I think we can reconcile the two. One of the classic cases was when one particular denomination wanted to make its communion service more up to date. And they were going through the lectionary. And they were worried that the gospel selection for Easter and Good Friday would offend Jewish people. I strongly submit not a whole lot of Jewish people attend Good Friday or Easter communion services. No, they don't. Now a lot of them wouldn't particularly care what was in there. And they do know what's in the Bible. A lot of them do. So, these people were worried that it might be offensive. Why worry? Why? 
etc. Offending versus enlightening. That's a dichotomy. Polarity. That we can manage. I cite Christian examples because just about everybody that's going to listen to this, that's going to watch this, knows the particular examples I talk about regardless of what other tradition you are. Druid, Alexandrian, whatever. You'll know them. Why? Because there are so many Christians that you can't avoid some of their scripture, especially the high points. And you can't avoid dealing with Christians. Meanwhile, I know plenty of people who don't even know any Gardnerians or Alexandrians. And they wouldn't recognize a Druid if they did know Druid if they did know him. So But it's a relevant question for us too. And so how about it? Offending versus enlightening. Sometimes you've got to say something to get a point across. I'm Aiden, blessed be. Uriel's Gifts and the Secrets in Plain Sight are sponsored by the Temple of Gaia. At Temple of Gaia, we don't train you to our path. We show you how to find and pursue your own path. Above all, we try to provide a great place to come together and to share. We're located in Collingdale, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, and wherever cyberspace can be reached. To learn more, visit our website at templeofgaiainc.org or our meeting place in cyberspace at templeofgaia.ning.com. Thank you for coming. Feel free to return at any time. We intend to always have something for you here. Blessed be. This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.